Live from Denver, this is Colorado's own Channel 2 News at 7. We're on it. Breaking news at 7. More vaccine mandates are headed to Colorado, and we're on it. Also new tonight, one metro county is now recommending people once again wear masks inside, even if they're vaccinated. The monsoon moisture making a comeback. Chief Meteorologist Dave Frazier pinpoints how hot things will get before the much-needed rain arrives. And cowboy cooking. There's still a lot of working wagons out there that'll go out for the ranches. See history come alive at the annual Chuck Wagon competition at Cheyenne Frontier Days. First and breaking at 7, Channel News confirming through independent sources that new vaccine rules are on the way. The city and county of Denver will soon require COVID-19 vaccines for its employees. This is what the independent sources are telling me today. The mayor and others are set to make this official announcement on Monday. There is to be a plan for there uh, to have exceptions for this vaccine. Uh, just moments ago, the mayor's office tells me, and I quote, many municipalities across the country are moving in the direction of mandatory vaccinations as Mayor Hand Hancock has said all week, all options are on the table when it comes to stemming the spread of the virus, protecting the health of our residents, and ultimately saving lives. The best thing people can do is get vaccinated. Now on top of that, I have learned that it appears Colorado is considering the same for state employees. Just a short time ago, a spokesman for Governor Jared Polis told me, and I quote, we are looking at the new federal policy and weighing if it is right to apply it to the state workforce and how we would operationalize that. And breaking tonight, two metro counties are now recommending that people wear masks in indoor public settings regardless of your vaccination status. The CDC issued new recommendations today saying vaccinated people should wear masks indoors in COVID hotspots. Just within the last 30 minutes, Jeffco Public Health announced that it will be aligning with the new CDC guidance and joining Broomfield, which made the announcement earlier today. And just a few hours ago, President Joe Biden announced new rules for federal employees. They must show proof of vaccination or follow regular testing and masking rules. The new policy for the federal employees is not a mandate, and people who don't get vaccinated are not at a risk of losing their jobs. All right, now here in Colorado, UC Health, Banner Health, and Denver Health are all set to require COVID-19 vaccinations very soon. And as our Gabrielle Franklin reports into your health tonight, other employers could follow suit. Vaccine mandates aren't new. We've seen them around for years for other diseases in the past, but doctors say was only about half of the population here in Colorado vaccinated against COVID-19. We may see more employers calling for them here in Colorado. I think in terms of the vaccination rollout and the, and the process of making a decision about a mandate, um, that is playing out at a much faster pace than what we've seen in the past. UC Health and Denver Health are the latest employers requiring workers to get protected against COVID. And Dr. Matthew Winia, Director of Bioethics and Humanities at CU Anschutz, says more workplaces will likely join the list. The professional ethics around this are quite clear. If you are a health professional, you've taken an oath not to harm your patients. And um, if you catch COVID, even if you're asymptomatic and you end up giving it to a patient, that is the very definition of unethical for a healthcare professional. Many people have asked, is it legal for employers or the government to require the shots? The blunt answer to your question, are vaccination mandates legal, is yes, they are clearly legal under U.S. law and under the U.S. Constitution. That has been litigated repeatedly and um, essentially always comes up with the same answer. Things have been that way since the early 1900s when the Supreme Court upheld smallpox vaccine mandates. Dr. Winia says if we want COVID outbreaks to stop like they did with smallpox, the key is vaccines, but the choice to vaccinate is up to you. What we're talking about with vaccine mandates are things like if you don't get vaccinated, you are going to have to pay a fine or you're not going to be able to do this activity that you would like to be able to do. Um, you may not even be able to hold the job that you have right now if you don't get vaccinated. Those um, you know, are not the same as forcibly injecting someone. Now, as for which types of businesses we may see putting these mandates into place, doctors say that will depend on who we see spreading the illness among vulnerable populations. But experts do expect that these mandates will hold up in court, even with certain states placing bans in place. Outside the state capitol, Gabrielle Franklin, Channel 2 News.
Breaking right now at 7, right now, Thornton Police investigating a multi-car crash on I-25 northbound. The highway is closed at 144th Avenue. Police say two people were taken to the hospital and four cars are being towed away. They say the highway will be closed for an extended period of time. And now to your pinpoint weather, a live look at the airport right now. We're a little bit of wind out there tonight. You can see the camera out there shaking around a bit. All right, and that's not all. Some storms are out there as well. David, is the beginning of the rainy days. Yeah, the mountains have been seeing it every day this week. We've been dealing with flash flood watches, warnings on and off. We still have that going on tonight. But now we're starting to see those storms shifting a little bit to the east. And if you look closely, we showed you this at 4 o'clock when we were on the air, that a couple may sneak out across the northern front range north of Denver. And that's what's happened. We got a little front that went by the airport, kind of kicked up things. Here's where the lightning is. It's mainly off to the west of us. What we're seeing is just a few showers with some wind. Notice there's no lightning here on the northern front range. There's your flash flood watches. Get ready for more of that on the map, that green colored as we go into the weekend, staying in play. And this is rain vision where it's rained. Uh, we did have a brief closure in Glenwood Canyon. You can see the rain fell across the canyon and heavier rain down there in the southwest triggered a few warnings. We'll take a radar tour in a second. But for right now, watch a couple of storms come off the northern front range. Pretty good cluster there. Larimer, Boulder counties out towards Jackson County, but then everything comes to an end overnight tonight. Tomorrow Tomorrow will start quiet before the storms return. Here's your hour by hour. It was a hot day. We're slowly cooling out of the 80s into the 70s. We'll drop to the 60s by tomorrow morning. Here's what I'm tracking along with the rest of the Pinpoint Weather Team. Uh, one more hot day. We've been in the 90s, touched 100 every day this week. We're going to end the work week that way. But then the rain arrives and we've got a nice cool pattern kicking in this weekend and lasting longer in Pinpoint Weather. All right, Dave, we'll see you in a few. New developments tonight. The Aurora officer charged with felony assault for choking a suspect and pistol whipping him is off the force. He quit this afternoon. John Hobart submitted his letter of resignation today. The department says it will still be conducting an official internal affairs investigation into the alleged misconduct to determine what the appropriate discipline might have been for Hobart. New at 7, a shootout with Larimer County Sheriff's deputies and a suspected drunk driver. Last night about 10 o'clock, deputies responded to a suspected drunk driver in Berthet. They say the driver is 52-year-old Eric Locker. Then he and deputies shot at each other near 2nd Street and Welch Avenue. The driver was rushed to the hospital. We are told no deputies were hurt. A critical incident response team and Loveland police are investigating. Now, this 49-year-old man living in Aurora was arrested today. Mark Lindrud was wanted in Arizona for numerous counts of sexual conduct with a minor and sexual abuse of a minor. He was a teacher right here at Vista Peak Prep before being placed on administrative leave. And during the investigation, officials found that Lindrud has worked at more than eight Denver metro area schools. Aurora police are looking for more information about what could be potential incidents involving Lindrud. You can report any crimes to our partners at Metro Denver Crime Stoppers. Their number, 720-913-STOP. All right now, some people in Park Hill are fed up. They are sick of dealing with this, a disgusting problem. They say this man has been defecating outside in their neighborhood. Channel 2's Michael Konoposik is looking into the issue tonight. This is not the most pleasant story, a bizarre situation, really. Neighbors say that a man who appears to be exercising will pull his pants down in broad daylight and then use an alleyway as his toilet. Something doesn't smell right in North Park Hill. Residents say they've had enough. It's definitely not something that we thought we would be navigating through. This woman says she has evidence of the dirty deed that's happened twice over the past few weeks in the same location. Roughly, yes. Yeah, right in front of the camera. So. <laughs> Stills from the surveillance video have been shared on Facebook. On Facebook, it resonated with folks. And she says she's called the police. The foulness is the talk of the neighborhood. Uh -huh. We'll not like the reaction if I get to. Pam lives next door. If people get upset of you over their dog pooping in their yard, you can imagine people would get upset if they caught a human being doing it behind their house. This is not the first time public defecation has attracted outrage in Colorado. In 2017, a woman who gained the nickname the Mad Pooper was accused of repeatedly pooping in public. Similar to the Springs, the man in Park Hill appears to be jogging or running. He's continuously doing it, then there's something wrong with him. Very appropriate. The woman who's raising the concern says she's all about having grace for those who are down on their luck, or if it was an emergency, one-time occurrence. But she says that's not the case here. They're coming prepared with toilet paper, but not a bag, and not coming back to clean up. Now neighbors wonder what will happen next. Will the public attention prevent or perhaps increase?
encourage future dump and runs. The woman who reported this to police says she was told that there's not much police can do unless this person is caught in the act. Now, we do have a response from Denver's Department of Public Health and Environment. We have that response on our website. In Denver, I'm Michael Konoposik, Channel 2 News. All new at 7, the innovative aerospace company that's expanding right here in Colorado, bringing nearly 200 new jobs with it. Also new tonight, what a good Samaritan is doing to get his life back on track after he was nearly killed, caught in the crossfire while trying to help a victim during a violent fight. Plus, if an army marches on its stomach and a cowboy rides on a horse, well, someone's got to feed him, right? What? Chuck Wagon competition from Cheyenne Frontier Days coming up. Scan this code and download the Pinpoint Weather app, Colorado's most accurate forecast. Pinpoint Weather on Colorado's own Channel 2. This summer. Chris Tomer, weekday mornings on Channel 2's Daybreak. It's all new for us at 7, a former Japanese-American internment camp here in southeast Colorado is now one step closer to being a national historic site. The House of Representatives passed the bill 416-2 to two earlier today. Colorado Congressman Ken Buck says the bill will preserve the site and recognize the horrible injustices committed there. 10,000 Japanese-Americans were sent to the site in the last few years of World War II. 121 died there. The bill now goes to the Senate. New at 7 next Monday, you don't need to pay an entrance fee to visit a state park. Colorado Parks and Wildlife is waiving fees to celebrate Colorado Day. Colorado Day is usually celebrated on August 1st, but this year free entrance will only be on Monday the 2nd. As a note, other fees like camping and reservations do remain in effect. Colorado has 42 state parks. You can visit CPW's website for more information on each park. Yeah, hungry? If not, you will be after this Chuck Wagon Championship competition right here. It's one of the most popular events up at Cheyenne Frontier Days. Our Dan DeRue shows us all about it and its history celebrating cowboy cuisine. You might say Lano, Texas is a fur piece to Cheyenne, Wyoming. On the fire. But that don't bother Bobby Mims none. Getting ready to make some sausage gravy. Bobby and crew are here, not just to cook but to compete. I like a real peppery uh, gravy. It may not look like it, but this 131-year-old original chuck wagon. It's a Newton wagon. It was made in 1890. Is the grandpappy to the modern-day food truck. Here's our period uh, coffee grinder. You got your coffee beans right in there, and it grinds out. Period correct tools and, and everything they may need to try and fix. You know, here's an old antique wrench. Pretty amazing to see on these wagons when you really get into the detail. You can see the black shadow and the yellow and the red trim. The cowboys, they could actually come up riding up right next to the wagon and the dipper would be hanging on the side of the wagon and they'd come up and they'd get a dipper of water and so this was their water bottle back in the 1890s. Bobby Mims loves history. Hello. Let's get that fire going up. And cooking and rodeo. That's why he says cowboy cuisine suits him just fine. Put some shredded cheese in his eggs. Traveling 1,000 miles yeah. from home in Texas to compete with nine no, other good. chuck wagons, not for fame, certainly not for the money. You could earn up to $2,500. He competes for this, doing something he loves. Over open fire. And to honor those culinary cowboy cooks of days gone by and the men they served. Dan DeRue, Channel 2 News. And by the way, still have time to catch it. The chuck wagon competition is this Saturday. That bell, by the way, like Pavlov's dog for these two. Oh, They're yeah. Like, Supper time. Oh, <laughs> that looks Breakfast, good. Breakfast, eggs on a skillet yeah. over a fire. A little gravy that he made there. A little gravy, biscuits. Perfect. Yeah, you couldn't ask for anything better. I'm with breakfast fine, any meal. Breakfast, lunch, or dinner. It's good stuff. Breakfast, yeah. So, all right, guys, let's get to work with pinpoint weather. We're starting with radars. We're tracking showers and thunderstorms across the area again. Most of it is stayed out west. Uh, if you're with us at 4 o'clock, we told you a couple could sneak off the foothills over the north. 
northern front range and you'll see that in just a second but these storms kind of firing off now you got these big complexes of rain and we have had to deal once again with some flash flood warnings there are still a few and you'll see those in just a second look at all the lightning it's out west not seeing much here yet these storms along the front range are just getting going so here's the wider view up and down the front range and watch everything stays off to the west we did have a warning up there near Walden but you can see that storm kind of swirling away and then watch the storms come right up here right around Erie on the northwest side and then continue there they are right there so here's a closer view not picking up any lightning yet but you may hear a rumble of thunder out of those on the north side of town they're moving to the north so I didn't put these in Denver's forecast the one thing you have to watch out for at this time of the year is sometimes if these collapse they'll throw out a gush of air across the ground we call that a gust front and you can track those and sometimes they'll be the focus for additional showers and thunderstorms that the computer models just can't pick up on so we keep a close eye out for that not seeing that just yet still have heavy rain here and a couple of flood advisories even a flash flood warning down to the south you can see those little green shaded areas we're not hearing a lot of reports of anything substantial but again these areas are either burn scars or they're saturated or the rain is at such an intense rate that it can in small streams and creeks and if you're near a canyon bring the water level up quickly so keep that in mind, and we'll be dealing with that all weekend long as rain showers are in the forecast for probably the next five days. Uh, continue with flash flood warnings down to the south and west. They've seen that many times this week, and you'll see more of that. In Denver, it's pretty quiet. Again, skies overhead on the back of Sunshanker Skycam Network. Not showing us all that much. A few clouds. We're still at a hot 90 degrees, and a southeast wind is coming up 15 to 20 miles per hour. By the way, that 90 at this hour is actually our high at this time of the year. We hit 95. 91 in Greeley. Same at Fort Collins, 70s off to the west, so nice refreshing temperatures there, even into the 60s now in some locations. So this complex of thunderstorms will start to head our way. Again, northern front range, one or two, but watch as they come off the higher terrain, they just kind of fall apart. Now this would be what you call a gust front that could come through. But again, Futurecast isn't picking up on any additional showers. So as things get away from the base of the foothills, they just don't stay together. But a couple of storms, certainly possible. Tomorrow, we'll do it again. Here come the storms. Again, you'll see a hint of red and uh, a hint of green here. Some of the yellow and red up into the mountains. That's the heavier storms. We'll have some scattered storms here, a few across the northern border. Not a great day for rain tomorrow. But underneath any storm at this time of the year, you can get heavy rain. Just not going to see the frequency of those storms. Better chances in the mountains as the sun sets, the storms fade away. We'll do it again tomorrow. Here comes the building thunderstorms, and we're going to have to watch out here in the San Juans. We've already had several flash flood warnings for more. We'll keep an eye on Glenwood Canyon. We'll keep an eye on the burn scars in the foothills. As we get into the weekend, more and more monsoon moisture, basically a good plume of moisture coming up from the desert southwest, will set up over Colorado, setting the stage for showers and thunderstorms with heavy rain both Saturday and Sunday. 66 for Denver's low tonight. Some 50s in the mountains. 60s out west. Mainly 60s here. And again, another hot day. Cold front doesn't come in until tomorrow night. So mid-90s, up 100 degree heat. 80s and 90s in the mountains and points west. So in the morning, you'll have smoke and haze. You'll notice it. Clouds will start to increase late morning. We'll throw in a couple of storms late in the day as we go above normal, which is 90 to 95 degrees. Then the cold front comes in. We're down to 81 and 79 with the best chance for rain Saturday and Sunday. Has the highest chance. And again, even here along the front range, without a burn scar, you can still get some ponding on the roads and small streams and creeks can come up. Heaviest is Saturday night into Sunday morning. Continued chances, albeit at a lower possibility, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we dry out on Thursday, but look at this, we're staying in the 80s for pretty much all of next week. Yep, and we need every single raindrop. Thanks, Dave. New at 7, we give you an inside look at what it takes to keep Olympic athletes safe and the unique challenges agents are facing going into this year's Summer Games. Also new at 7, the simple steps you can take to protect your phone and important information from hackers. Really, it's easier than you probably think. Those stories and much more coming up tonight on the Channel 2 News at 7. Your Pinpoint Weather 7-day forecast to plan your ride is brought to you by Law Tigers, Colorado's motorcycle lawyer. You are never going to miss a big story on Channel 2 Daybreak. Biggest team of reporters. The most accurate traffic, most accurate weather. People who are on this team, they've been here 20 years. All of them are committed to bringing you the news as it happens in a responsible way. But we also want you to be happy and excited to tune in. We bring you the news, but we also bring you something else. Joy, laughter, friendship, community. A reason to actually walk out the door in a good mood. Daybreak with Chris and Katie. Weekday mornings on Channel 2. 
Safety and security are a top priority when it comes to the Olympics. Of course, and all new at 7 tonight, Marilena Boleris is on it with how the State Department helps protect American athletes. Keeping Team USA safe is an important job, and it's probably one that you don't really think about. But we are here at the U.S. Embassy in Tokyo. We got an inside look at how the Diplomatic Security Service keeps our athletes safe. If you've never heard of the Diplomatic Security Services before, that's okay. Their goal is to blend into the background. We're the law enforcement arm of the U.S. Department of State. One of their missions is to protect the Secretary of State, but they're here in Tokyo for a special and important reason. Our biggest concern is always any Anything security related, that's what our purpose is here, is to make sure that Team USA is in a safe and secure environment. It takes work from multiple agencies in both the U.S. and Japan and years of planning. Our job is to make sure that we build those relationships uh, well in advance. Uh, so if something were to happen, we know who to call, we know what to do. Getting ready for Tokyo was challenging. These Olympic Games are, are definitely unique in the sense of uh, the global pandemic. So the one thing that we were able to count on every day was, was things that are changing. But the agents did their prep work and got into place. We've got some agents that are actually with the teams or traveling with the teams. And then we have agents that are at the venues. And so their job is to know that venue in and out. Other agents work in the embassy, tracking the movement of teams and any potential threats. Agents say the games have been quiet so far, except for their enthusiasm for Team USA. We are objective in our security matters, but certainly deep down, we're truly American. Americans and we're rooting for Team USA. In Tokyo, I'm Maria Elena Baloris. Not an exciting couple of weeks for the folks over there doing that. Yeah, nice assignments. Yeah. All right, it's been more than a year since a deadly shooting outside of a bar in Arvada. We catch up with a good Samaritan who rushed in to help one of the victims and ended up in the hospital for two months. What his life looks like a year after the attack. Plus, the federal eviction ban is set to end this Saturday. Why it likely won't be extended again. This is Colorado's own Channel 2 News at 7.30. We're on it. Just over a year ago, a fight between two motorcycle groups ended in a deadly shooting right outside an Arvada bar. One person was killed. Three more were hurt, including a good Samaritan who rushed in to help. That good Samaritan is an Arvada father and accomplished musician who says he was just minutes from death after that fight. I just like to help people. Always have. And, uh... I don't regret it. Ryan McPherson's desire to help others nearly cost him his life when he ran to help one of the victims of last July's shooting in Arvada. I saw someone hurt, screaming for help, who had been shot. And I ran out across the street into this parking lot to this person that I don't know to help them. He doesn't remember anything about the incident, but witnesses tell police someone hit Ryan over the head and ran him over with a motorcycle. The next thing I knew, I woke up in Northern Colorado Hospital a month later, I think. Ryan suffered a compound fracture in his leg that left him with nerve damage in his foot. He also suffered a traumatic brain injury. I had to learn how to play the guitar again, sing again. I had to wear a diaper. Uh, pretty embarrassing. His doctors tell him his recovery is nothing short of amazing, but this incident has cost him more than just his physical injuries. I wasn't able to pay rent for a couple of months. Next thing I know, I was told there was an eviction notice. His friends have a GoFundMe set up to help Ryan. He says his goal is to release a new album at the beginning of next year, and his dream is to one day play at Red Rock. But for now, he is just focused on moving forward. I literally was five minutes away from death. I tell people a lot. I am living proof that you can overcome anything. Investigators are still working on this case, and if you have any information that could help them, call our partners at Metro Denver Crime Stoppers. That number is 720-913-STOP. And we also put a link to the GoFundMe page on our website, kwgn.com. Right now, police are searching for a second suspect after a shoplifting incident turned into a shooting in Greenwood Village. It happened this morning, just before 9, right here at Havana Auto Parts. Police say two men left the store without paying. Two employees confronted them. There was some kind of a struggle. One of the suspects pulled out a gun. So did one of the store employees. Police say the employee shot one of the suspects. He's now being treated at the hospital. The other suspect took off in a black Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk. It had Colorado rental plates on it. If you know anything, you're asked to call police.
police. A man wanted in Westminster for assault, domestic violence, and attempted murder is now behind bars. Denver police arrested James Montoya last Friday. The arrest stems from a February domestic violence case. A few weeks later, police say Montoya broke into the home of the woman and her brother and attacked them. The woman had minor injuries. Her brother was stabbed. All new tonight, Larimer County Sheriff's deputies are looking for this man. Take a good look at him, Luis Cano. He has a warrant out for his arrest. He's about six foot one. He weighs 185 pounds. Officials say he did not appear in court for his felony DUI charge. He also faces a few misdemeanors, including resisting arrest and domestic violence. If you have any information on where he could be, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers for Northern Colorado. That number is 970-221-6868. New developments tonight. You could have some cash headed your way. More than 200,000 people here in Colorado will soon be getting a check from CenturyLink. State officials found the company unfairly and deceptively charged hidden fees dating all the way back to 2014. They also found CenturyLink failed to provide discounts and refunds it had promised customers. As part of the settlement, the company refunded 1.7 million bucks directly to people. CenturyLink is also required to change its business practices and clearly explain its pricing terms in its sales and advertising. Looking ahead to next week, Denver International Airport is hosting a huge job fair. More than 700 positions are available. They are looking to fill a wide variety of roles, including food service, safety, and other specialists. The airport Airport CEO says new shops and restaurants are expected to open soon, along with more airlines and other services. The job fair will be held on Tuesday, August 4th from 1030 a.m. until 10 p.m. at the airport on the plaza that connects the Westin Hotel to the Jefferson Terminal. Veteran candidates can attend a special session from 10 to 1030 in the morning. All new at 7.30 tonight, a new airline is headed to Northern Colorado, connecting the Northern Colorado Regional Airport with a nonstop flight to Los Angeles. Starting October 6th, the Belo Airlines will fly twice a week from the NOCO Airport to Hollywood Burbank. One-way fares start at just 49 bucks. Flights are set to be on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Also new tonight, an aircraft design and manufacturing company just selected Colorado Springs for its new research and development headquarters. The governor's office says Terra Dynamics develops in innovative vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. Once fully operational, the company is expected to create 186 new jobs with an annual salary of around $120,000, which is 233% higher than the average wage in El Paso County. Right now, the White House is calling on Congress to pass a new law to extend the federal eviction moratorium. That's set to expire this Saturday. As David Spunt reports all new tonight, this could force millions of Americans who are behind on their rent out of their homes. Millions of Americans who are behind on their rent may soon be looking for a new place to live. This follows the Biden administration's announcement the nationwide ban on evictions will expire on Saturday. President Biden uh, would have strongly supported a decision by the CDC to further extend this eviction moratorium to protect renters at this moment of heightened vulnerability. Unfortunately, as uh, some of you might know, the Supreme Court has made clear that this option is no longer uh, available. The decision comes after the Supreme Court's 5-4 to four ruling that extended the COVID moratorium through the end of July. Justice Brett Kavanaugh, who was in the majority, said he'd block any additional extensions without, quote, clear and specific congressional authorization. President Biden strongly supports the program, providing relief for millions of renters during the pandemic. The president is calling on Congress to act on another extension, quote, without delay. We will continue in all of government effort to keep Americans safe and housed through the swift uh, dispersal of emergency rental assistance to states and cities. The CDC put the federal moratorium in place last September to prevent tenants unable to pay rent from being evicted during the pandemic. At the beginning of July, 3.6 million were behind on rent, down from 6.4 million in March. That was David Spunt reporting. Landlords argue an extension is unnecessary as more people get vaccinated and get back to work. More rain is on the way for this weekend, and meteorologist Chris Tomer explains why flash flooding is more likely in July and August. I shot this video about a week ago with the last monsoon surge that we had. You just visually see all the moisture streaming in over the top of the ridge lines and high peaks, and I shot this from about 13,500 feet. What you're looking at here is more moisture. 
higher dew points, more humidity in the air. All that is streaming in to fuel and juice up the afternoon thunderstorms, making heavy rain more likely. That's what separates thunderstorms in July and August from all other times of the year. Let me show this to you and break it down. Lower dew points outside of July and August, making it a drier type of storm. Whereas in July and August, higher dew points, more moisture in the air, fueling these storms. So when they hit you, if they do, flash flooding is more of a possibility. You can have an inch of rain in 30 minutes. And in Colorado, we're just not set up for that kind of fast rainfall, making that flash flooding more likely. All right, I'll be back here tomorrow morning at 4.30 on Daybreak. Back to you guys. All right, thanks, Chris. I'm meteorologist Dave Frazier. Uh, we've already seen that set up with flash flooding in the mountains. We're going to continue to see that this weekend and heavy rain possibly falling here in the Mile High City in pinpoint weather. And all new at 7, the simple ways to stop hackers from breaking into your phone. A weather change will bring relief from the heat this weekend. The timing for rain and the flash flood threat in the mountains and your pinpoint weather forecast. And at 7, a behind the scenes look from up in the skies of Sky 2. I go inside the chopper to see how it helps bring you the news, traffic and weather every morning here on Daybreak. Tomorrow morning on Channel 2. It's the back to... And just a quick update now, that job fair at DIA, I told you about just a minute ago, will run from 10.30 a.m. to 1 p.m., not 10 p.m., 10.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. It's happening next Tuesday, August 4th, at the airport, at the plaza that connects the Westin Hotel to the Jepson Terminal. All right, you know, we take our phones everywhere, and we have so much personal information on them these days. That is why hackers are constantly looking for new ways to steal our information. But there are easy things we can do to protect it and keep the hackers out. Operations and federal agencies are no longer just the primary targets of cyber attacks. Now, anyone with a cell phone could be at risk. However, experts say protecting yourself is easier than you might think. Reboot your uh, phone regularly. The National Security Agency says turning your cell phone on and off is not always a foolproof way to avoid getting it hacked, but it certainly helps make it more difficult for cyber criminals to infiltrate your device and gain access to your personal and financial information. Modern cyber attacks or, or, you know, a chain of two, three, or even more uh, vulnerabilities in a row uh, that have to be successfully exploited. And if you can reset the adversary back to the beginning of that chain and force them to go through the whole thing again, that's also an aspect of incurring uh, cost on them. And for an added layer of protection, the NSA says you should also focus on managing your apps. When you're done with one, you're not going to use it anymore. Uh, uh, uninstall it. Because by doing that, you, you keep your attack surface uh, more bounded. Meanwhile, President Joe Biden is issuing a stern warning to the international community about cyber threats, cautioning that they could even lead to war. If we end up in a war, a real shooting war, with a major power, it's going to be as a consequence of a cyber breach. And if you're wondering just how many times you should be rebooting your phone to make sure it's nice and safe, the NSA says do it at least once a week. Good to know. To your health consumer alert tonight, McCormick is recalling three seasonings because they may be contaminated with salmonella. The recall involves McCormick Perfect Pinch Italian Seasoning, McCormick Culinary Italian Seasoning, and Frank's Red Hot Buffalo Ranch Seasoning. The products were sold in Colorado and 31 other states. If you have any of these products, McCormick says you should throw them out and contact their Consumer Affairs Division for a replacement or full refund. And new tonight, the city of Boulder offering some dog swag for owners and to pledge to keep shared open spaces clean of waste. The Let's Do It event is happening a week from Sunday at multiple trailheads around the city from 9 to 11 in the morning in hopes to raise awareness of the risk of leaving dog waste behind, which can cause harm to waterways, soil, and encourage algal blooms in the water. Join the event and sign to sign the pledge and get a bandana for your furry friend to show off. Well, the digital data team talking with DraftKings today about NFL action as training camp kicks off. It's day two. I'll have an update on that in a minute. The most action across the country is on the Chiefs to win the Super Bowl. Not what Broncos country wants to hear, but eh, there was last year, too, and they didn't win. All right, the Giants to win the NFC East, by the way. That's another big bet. As for Colorado betters, they're putting money on the Broncos' season win total, which now sits at 8.5.
You're seeing a lot of uh, regional betters in, in Colorado taking the under, <laughs> taking the under on the win total. Uh, and look, it started at seven. It's at eight and a half now. Hmm. It went up, but people are still betting under it. Interesting. Other popular bets for Broncos country. This is an easy one. Patrick Sertan to win Defensive Rookie of the Year with the odds set at plus 1,400. And for Cortland Sutton to win Comeback Player of the Year after he missed last season with an injury. Those odds also set at plus 1,400. Hopefully some Broncos fans have some money when those players win at the end of the year. That plus 1,400 means you bet $1.00. You win 14. Eight and a half wins for the Broncos. Interesting that it's gone up one win in about the last three hours or so. But Did they watch training camp I was going to say, maybe somebody watched training camp and saw something Not going to see. on. So. Anyway. Anyway, Drew Locke to the Bridgewater news. really impressed some folks. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no question about it. I was loving your story about the Let's Do It campaign. <laughs> I love the title. It's a lot of Actually, fun. Actually, the title should be Let's Do Do It. <laughs> Let's get to work with yeah, pinpoint weather. I think they missed there. They were they were one do shot short. All right, showers and thunderstorms out there. Uh, you can see them in this line kind of stretching from the north central mountains back to the southwest. Have a few little showers and thunderstorms getting underway over the northern front range. Again, monitoring for lightning here, just not picking it up. So some showers with a splash of rain maybe across the northern front range. You can see where the electricity is. Watch this. You can see the storms off to the west, couple of firing up there, and then we'll get this little development here on the northwest side, and you'll see these couple of showers kind of grow up. There they are right there. But again, I'm not picking up any lightning, and they're already starting to fade away. But if you can get a shower here, as you'll see on Futurecast, the farther away from the foothills you get, the less likely that these storms will stay together. Still have pretty good rain, have some flood advisories, as you can see. Still a flash flood warning, so we've still got pockets of heavy rain. And where you see the white at times, that's hail. Radar is picking up on it. Southwest Colorado still have a flash flood warning going on down here over the San Juan Mountains. Back to the western border, heavy rain again for about the third day in a row there. High temperatures reached the 70s, 80s, and 90s out west. The clear heat was here in the east with mid and upper 90s from Denver to Fort Collins Greeley and then 100 degree heat towards La Junta in the south and east. Denver coming in at 95 degrees. Now that's five cooler than the 100 we set yesterday, but it's still above normal. Your record from 2005 at 99 stays in the record books. Out the door tomorrow. It's another hot one, but a couple of storms possible. Not much going on as you'll see on future cast, but like tonight, you can't rule out one or two showers or an isolated thunderstorm coming out across the front range. Not seeing that thread here. We just got those evening clouds over the Mile High City on the Bacchus and Shanker Skycam Network. 90 right now with the southeast wind. State temperatures. 90s east, northeast, but we're starting to see the, the hotter temperatures from the afternoon coming down. You're starting to see 60s and 70s in the mountains and now down to 89 out in Grand Junction. Lows tonight will be in the 50s in the mountains, mountain valleys to the south and west. We here in the east will stay in the 60s, even warm 60s, close to 70 degrees. Southeast Colorado, Denver at 66. So watch the storms to the west of us kind of continue to be there and then break up. Again, anything coming off the foothills, having a hard time staying together. Sunshine tomorrow morning, building clouds, and the storms return. And in the mountains along I-70, we'll watch for flooding again. Southwest Colorado, you could clearly go back to a few more flash flood warnings. Just be prepared for that no matter where you are in the Colorado mountains. And then here in the east, as you'll see in my seven-day forecast, the heavier rain threat will switch here, which means the burn scars in the foothills and even the urban corridor in the front range could deal with some flooding at times. It's always a tricky thing. Thing to see exactly who gets the best rain and how it comes together. But we'll be watching it this weekend. Highs tomorrow back into the 90s, back into 100 degree heat here, and you're staying in the 80s and 90s out west. The cold front that increases the rain chances doesn't arrive until tomorrow night, so one more hot day to get through. Then you'll see the improving chances. Your hour by hour, forecast high 95 degrees. Certainly going to be toasty, but like today, a little more cloud cover, a little more shade, a little more wind. It doesn't feel as bad as it did just just yesterday. Cold front comes in 81 and 79. Pretty good chance for rain. As a matter of fact, Saturday, Saturday afternoon and Sunday, there is a potential along the front range that some rain gauges could pick up between one and two inches of rain. That's good moisture. We're only at about a quarter of an inch for the month here in Denver. We're about one and three quarters behind. If we can pick up an inch or two, we could actually end out the month in pretty good shape. And you are now looking into the beginning of August, guys. Here we go. Thunderstorms continuing and the temperatures staying in the 80s. Another 
another hot one at Broncos training camp today. It is day two. It just wrapped up. Wide receiver Jerry Judy hoping for a great season. We hope it formed too. More on him and the rest of the team with Taylor Brooks next. Day two of training camp for the Denver Broncos can be checked off the list. They will practice again tomorrow and Saturday, then have Sunday off before five more days of practice next week. But back to today, though, where Bruce Hurdle takes us through the most important talking points of the day. It's pretty apparent the Broncos are deeper and more athletic this year. Too much skill, you know, to go out there and, and you know, keep putting what we put on the field. And so, you know, this is the year, you know, it's either put up or shut up. One of the youngest teams in all the NFL last year and with precious little off-season work, there is clearly a more understanding and expectant vibe this season. It's good energy in the locker room, you know, everybody just coming out here to um, get better and just um, win every game every week so I feel like um, the energy is a lot more different. Of course quarterback remains the big question and nothing shifted the arrow today. Drew Locke actually missed every pass in 11 on 11 work until finishing with a flourish at the end of the day in red zone drills. He is a smarter quarterback but there's two stages to that. One is learning it while you're in a meeting room, while you're studying tape and then you got to be able to do it while you're on your feet with the rush coming in, making split-second decisions. Out of the playoffs for five straight seasons now and irrelevant for the last four, there better be some urgency. You know, we really got dogs at every position. You know, you check the roster, you know, you, you, you got a star guy in every, every spot. Every spot, man, so we could do it. It's all about putting it together, though, man. It's, that's what it comes down to, because every team right now really think they got the best team out there. It's just who comes to play, who shows up. At Broncos headquarters, I'm Bruce Hurdle. Thanks, Bruce. Well, we do know the Broncos like to run the ball, but Coach Fangio attesting to the fact that there is an apparent narrative out there that the ball is being passed a lot more than it used to be in the NFL. So he actually did his own research and found this out. I did a... Uh study of it this year and from 1980 to now passes have increased four point some percent okay so you still got to be able to run it and stop it yep some teams rely on one more than the other but uh, running the ball is still very important the Broncos do have some fantastic weapons in the wide receiver room, including second-year player Jerry Judy. He had his rookie moments last year with a few more drops than he would like, but Judy's teammates have all the faith in him, and he's believing as well. There's no doubt in my mind that, that Judy can't have an all-pro Pro Bowl season this year. Um, I mean, he's just that good. And everyone wanted to you know, talk about you know, you know, what happened last year, but I mean, I'm not even worried about it. I feel like I got a lot to pull this year. Um, I've been working very hard off season, off season just to have a great year this year, so I feel comfortable in all the hard work I put in um, this off season to be able to come this year and do what I do. All right, last but not least, here's the Japan 2020 leaderboard for the Olympics. The U.S. still leading overall with 40 medals across the board, followed by China, Russia, Japan, and Australia. Go Team USA. And Love go it. Broncos. Someone's got to right? complete a pass. <laughs> Teddy definitely winning the day today, but... Coach Fangio, of course, reminding us, this was at the barbecue on, uh, on Tuesday, that we can't look too much into it. But you know, we're out there with our notepads and we're looking sure, yeah. at the stats. That's what we do because every you, day, right? It, exactly. And it's, Wait, it's going to be and talked about so much. You guys are going to get sick. Yeah, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> Should have brought you guys some Did back. Von Miller I'm go out sorry. there and grill for y'all? I, I wish. He, he didn't know. Okay. I, I don't know who brought the food in, but it was really good. <laughs> sorry, guys. <laughs> Dave, what were you doing Tuesday night? I wasn't grilling. Well. <laughs> Working here, yep. slaving away. <laughs> right, thanks for joining us. More news coming up on Fox 31 at 9.